Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and I'm going to talk to you about a fundamental concept, the concept of the zero of a function. Here we have a function. And you know, and I know, that this is exactly the same as y equals negative 4x plus 5. I'm going to let y equal 0, and I'm going to solve for x. Okay, I'll subtract 5 for both sides. These guys zero out. I'm left with negative 4x equals negative 5. And then I divide both sides by negative 4 in order to get x by itself. Negative over negative, oops, there. Negative over negative is positive. The negative 4's cancel out here, leaving me with x. The negative signs cancel out here, leaving me with 5 fourths, which is indeed the answer. When you set y equal to 0 and solve for x, the answer you get is called the 0 of the function. Now for those of you who remember about intercepts, you'll notice this is also the way you find the x-intercept. There's an intimate relationship between um, uh, uh, zeros and x-intercepts as we're about to see. Here we go. Okay, now it says use the given graph to find each of the following. The zero of the fun, and you can see the answers here. We're going to find the zero of the function and the x-intercept. And this is a linear function. Well, where, where this line crosses the x-axis is the zero, well, it's the x-intercept, but the number x equals 6, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is x equals 6. 6 is the zero of the function. It's not the x-intercept. The x-intercept is the point 6, 0. So try to get this clear in your mind because we're going to be working with this concept a lot. The 6 is the 0 of the function and parentheses open, 6 comma 0, parentheses closed. This is the x-intercept. Okay, talk to you later. Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to do some applications that involve inequalities. The equation y equals 11.2x plus 14.2 estimates the amount that businesses will spend in billions of dollars on a certain business technology, where x is the number of years after 2001. For what years will the spending be more than 115 billion. Well, okay. The key phrase here, aside from the equation that represents the amount businesses will spend, is x. And x is the number of years after 2001. So the year 2001, that's ugly. I'm going to I'm going to move down here. 2001 can be expressed as x equals 0 because if x is the years after 2001, then 0 would be the number of years after 2001, if it's 2001. Now, on the other hand, 2002 would be x equals 1 because x equals 1 is one year 
after 2000, I mean, 2002 is one year after 2001. And the year 2003 would be x equals 2 because 2003 <clears throat> is two years after 2001. Okay, so let's check this out. We want to know for what years will the spending be more than $115 billion? And the equation y equals 11.2x plus 14.2 estimates the amount that businesses will spend in billions of dollars on technology. All right, so we want to know when this, how, after how many years the spending will be more than 115 billion. So we're going to take the spending equation and ask ourselves for what years will the spending be more than Notice it says more than, it doesn't say more than or equal to. Let me get this X. Okay. And so we're going to say greater than 115 because remember all of this is in billions. Now here is your inequality that you have to solve. Okay, so you would get out your trusty calculator and you can do that. You can solve that because we've just spent a good deal of time solving inequalities. Let's go to the next problem. Acme Movers charges $75 plus $40 per hour to move the household goods across town. Hanks Movers charges $55 per hour, flat, nothing up front, just $55 per hour. For what lengths of time does it cost less to hire Hanks Movers than Acme Movers? Okay, well, a, a basic, not entirely correct way to write this would just say, all right, we want Hank to be less than Acme. All right, well, Hank is $55 per hour. So however many hours it takes Hank, it's going to cost you $55. So let's let X equal the hours spent moving. I'm writing that down. All right. So Hank is just going to be $55 per hour times however many hours it takes, whereas Acme charges $75 and then only $40 per hour times however many hours it takes for you to move. Now there is your inequality statement. All you have to do is solve the inequality and you ought to come up with five hours as your answer. That is for times less than five dollars. So you should come up with X is less than five. Let's move on to the next one. Parsons Bank offers two checking account plans. The no frills plan that charges 40 cents per check, whereas the simple checking plan costs $8 per month plus 20 cents per check. For what number of checks per month will the simple checking cost less? Cost less than what? than the no frills. So let's write it again in that word way that's not really technically correct, but it gives us the idea what we're dealing with. Simple is less than no frills.
Now we're being asked about for the number of checks per month. So I suggest we let x equal let x equal the number of checks per month. Then let's see, the no frills, oh, no, no, simple checking first. Simple checking costs $8 per month plus 20 cents per check. So $8 per month plus 20 cents, point 20, times the number of checks. That's how much you're going to spend with every month with the simple checking plan and we want to find for how many checks that you write will the simple checking plan be less than no frills and no frills is just plain 40 cents per check times the number of checks that you write okay now that's your inequality statement. What you need to do is solve for x. And you should get that the simple checking plan will cost less if more than 40 checks are used per month. Okay? All right.